Um, so uh, our first bike counts were in 1991, and that was because the Walnut Street Bridge, which if you were back that far, was a rickety old bridge that needed to be um, basically rebuilt. And PennDOT, of course, built it like a highway. Um, but one of our earliest, one of our campaigns in, in 1991 and 1990 was actually trying to get bike lanes on the bridge. Um, and that's when we had our first bike counts because we did counts um, before the bridge was opened and we did counts after the bridge was open. Um, between then and 2005, we did sporadic bike counts, but we, we have been doing it annually since 2005. Um, and we have records that go back and we look at trends and um, we use the Schuylkill River bridges, which are, we don't really count the JFK bridge, but Spring Garden Street, Walnut Street, Chestnut Street, um, and South Street. Those are the bridges that we've been counting since 2005. And we use that as our base counts um, simply because they are pinch points and people have to go there to go from to and from West Philadelphia. Next slide. Um, So we just, so we do have the base counts, we measure the trends. Um, we have, we actually have 18 locations, but 17 are used for our um, calculations. So we have 17 locations and we do midge bridge intersection traffic. So um, the, the river counts are the middle of the bridge and they are just two way counts. Most of our counts are intersections such as um, Broad and Pine, where we're counting people coming in all directions. And we have one off-road count, and that is the Ben Franklin Bridge. Now we do also have, we do also count bridges. We also count the intersection um, by the Wissahickon Transit Center, um, who's coming off the, um, the Wissahickon Bikeway on and off onto Ridge Avenue. The exciting news about this is that um, they are reopening the bridges next week. Um, on the Wissahickon. So <laughs> if we get an early bike count and then we have a late bike count, that might be an interesting thing. Um, so I do believe the morning slot is still available um, for counting at the Wissahickon. Um, next slide. So how do we count? So we, um, our, our count period started on Tuesday and we had bad weather. So I hope nobody counted then. Um, and we count until the end of October and there's two shifts. So in the morning, the shift is 7.30 to 9 a.m. And in the evening it's 4.30 to six. Um, and we have two counts to um, check one count and the other kind of helps us give us a more accurate picture. Um, and we, we put these counts into 15 minute intervals and we use that to because it's much easier to calculate bikes per hour, bikes in 15 minute period. Um, it's just a better indicator of like when does the bike traffic peak instead of just giving like a raw number for that hour and a half. We only do our counts in dry weather. Do not count in the rain. Um, if you're kind of on the fence about it, um, just check the radar app on your phone and um, see if there's, you know, if it's gonna rain in the next hour and a half. Um, cloudy days are fine, um, but if it's raining or if it rained most of the day, chances are the numbers are going to be skewed and be much lower than what we thought. Next slide. So here is our count. Our, our form for our Schuylkill River bridge counts. Like I said, these are our base counts. Um, and the way we handle this is that we have a westbound count and an eastbound count. Um, and we also count bicyclists who are riding on the sidewalk and bicyclists who are going the wrong way. So if you are, if you spot a bicyclist going um, eastbound in the westbound travel lane, they are going the wrong way. And we use that to calculate, you know, um, how bicyclists are behaving. Um, it helps us measure 
um, you know, what's really going on and where we need to sort of remind people um, to ride with traffic and to not interfere with pedestrians on the sidewalk. And wrong way on the street, it's is is hazardous because not only are you sort of in the way of bicyclists going the correct way, but oftentimes if motorists are turning right, they're not looking in the other direction where you're coming from. Uh, next slide. Intersection counts. So these are the majority of our counts. Um, and we do it a little bit differently to keep it simple. So a lot of our streets are one-way streets that we count, especially in center city. So it's pretty easy. You're either going like on the, you're either going eastbound or westbound, such as saying if you're on Spruce Street, the direction in center city, the direction is westbound. If you're on Pine Street, the direction is eastbound. Um, same thing for most of the numbered streets. The exceptions, of course, are Broad Street. Um, and, um, you know, other streets outside of center city where we typically have two-way traffic. So um, with those, you're counting um, bicyclists who are arriving in either direction. And to deal with turning cyclists, the street you count them on are is um, counting them on the street that they are approaching. So if they are coming south on Broad and they're turning right, how about they're going north on Broad and they're turning right on Pine? Um, you you would say that that bicyclist is counted as going on as traveling on Broad Street. Um, next slide. So the Ben Franklin Bridge is our only off-road count. So again, we count differently. Um, and this is the only count where we actually count pedestrians. Um, and to get your cardinal direction screwed up, if they're coming from Camden to Philadelphia, they're going westbound. If they're going from Philadelphia to Camden, they're going eastbound. Um, and um, we record pedestrians only using tick marks. And we'll get into that uh, in a few minutes because the bicyclists we do, um, we do kind of personalize um, the, the bicyclists themselves as they are traveling. Next slide. And um, here's an example of a sample count form. So if you look at this, um, the location is um, you put the location on top, you put the date, um, who is, you know, you put your name um, on the, um, put your name on the completed by, and then you um, just record cyclists, um, where they're traveling, um, the gender that you perceive is um, of the cyclists, um, are they wearing helmets? And are they using an indigo bike? So if we um, look at the west column, 7.30 to 7.45, so that's the 15 minute time frame you're right in. Um, people go on westbound on Market Street Bridge right now, according to this count, we, I count um, four cyclists identified as female. Two of them are wearing helmets with the little hats on them. And we have um, three um, unknown or three other assi people assigned as other or unidentified for gender. Um, and also um, on the street. And what we're talking about on the on the street cell, just for simplicity there. Um, and there are three indigo bikes. And we do the same for sidewalk and we do the same for wrong way in the street. If you look in the lower right-hand corner and on the bottom, that's the tallies and that will help Cindy um, calculate um, as she puts this into a database. She can do it much faster um, if we put all this information in. And you know, there's eight, there's 17 intersections. You multiply that by four counts. There's almost doing 80 counts. And uh, it could be a little bit tedious. So, you know, tallying yourself is, is very, very helpful. It saves a lot of time. 
Um, if you look on the bottom, you see e-scooters. We count e-scooters like we do pedestrians on the Ben Franklin Bridge, and we don't assign them specific times. In that um, 45 minute period, um, Mark counted four e-scooters. Um, and what we do with the calculations of that is that we don't figure in the calculation to total number of bicyclists, but it allows us to compare the percentage of people riding e-scooters versus the percentage of people riding bicycles. Next slide. Um, and this is kind of, and this explains all those things that we, that we put into the sheet there. We're looking at behavior. Are they using bike share? Um, what is the perceived gender of bicyclists? Um, and uh, we've talked about this enough so we can go to the next slide. That's me, by the way, on the American Street bike lane um, before it was open and that was in January of 2021 and still wearing a mask outside, but it was also pretty cold that day. So it was actually pretty handy. Next slide. Um, so thanks, Stewie, my dog. Um, hold on. So recording perceived gender. Um, so we got the M, the F, and the X. Um, and we do this because um, empirical data and information from our bike counts um, shows that cyclists who are women, perceived to be female, are underrepresented and they, the data shows that there's a preference to um, take routes of better bike infrastructure. Um, historically, women only make up 30% of the bicyclists counted. Um, Males just tend to be more aggressive, seem a bit more fearless. Um, so I think the, the answer is everybody except people that perceive themselves as male um, probably follows a similar uh, pattern. Next slide. And so here are our symbols. We saw that on the sample sheet. Um, helmet users get a little, little hat or a little roof. And the Indigo Bike Share users, we we do all those features and then we circle them. Next slide. All right, so submitting the counts, um, take a picture. Um, and it's easiest for us if you are able to put both sheets into the picture because the way that we organize them is that we put them into a file um, and we call them up and then record, we look at the screen and record the counts. It's much easier to look at one sheet um, instead of trying to find the other AM, PM sheet. And it kind of gets confusing because, um, you know, is that an AM count? Is that a PM count? You know, it's just much easier if um, we have everything on one sheet. It's also very easy to do as a PDF. Uh, we don't care if we can see both of those on the screen. Um, if you want to do it the old fashioned way, you can just go to the office um, at um, 1500 Walnut Street on the 11th floor, suite 1107. And um, we'll have, a, we'll have a um, bin that says bike counts. And if no one's there, you can just slide it under the door. Um, so that's an easy way to do it. Um, and you email your counts to Cindy and she's at intern three at bicyclecoalition.org. Next slide. And finally, it's just, just some things to make your life easier. Using a pencil, I'm a really sloppy writer and pencil comes in handy with that eraser thing. Clipboard, not only is it um, easier to write on, it makes it look like you're really official. If you wanna really sort of, um, you know, look like a sort of traffic engineer, you can wear a reflective vest and find a hard hat that even looks even cooler. Um, Print out an extra sheet, it's a blank sheet, but it's really an, an extra sheet of the count form um, because you can mess it up and you might have to start over. Um, and it's always good to like set your alarms ahead of time. And so that'll kind of take the stress out of, all right, you know, what time is it? 
and you can just um, you know move along with your sheets. So I find that easier. You can do it any way you want. If you, a lot of places, um, you know, there might be a stoop or there's even like a utility box you can sit on. Um, if you're really crazy, you can bring a chair with you and just sit down. The Ben Franklin Bridge is fun because they got nice benches on the bridge. Um, so yeah, just try to make yourself comfortable. I should say bring water too. Um, good to know and maybe you know if there's a surprise rainstorm maybe you want to bring like a uh, you know rain jacket but that's your option and really looking at the weather that day uh next slide so where does this all go um we um we fill out a report we create a report every year um and um this will complete this probably in December and January and finalize it. Um, and it will be available definitely by the spring. And we actually look at the state of bicycling in Philadelphia. So we take these counts, we kind of synthesize them, compare them to the year, show the trends. But um, we also um, look at, uh, you know, what the census data tells us. And um, like, Indigo bike counts. So Indigo publishes their data and we, we chart that um, as well as sometimes the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission and the Center City District put out reports. I don't know if they'll be doing that this year, um, but that happens from time to time. Uh, I don't know if, Cindy, do you wanna to try to click on that and maybe show the story map? I don't know if this is going to work. Here we go. So yes, if you just, maybe Cindy will just scroll down and kind of give you a look, a look see what it looks like. Um, eventually, we'll, that's, um, that's the 11th Street below Washington. And here's the, the infographic that we use most often. Um, and this gives you a comparison. This is what the census data tells us, um, you know, also, what we were talking about before with um, female riders and um, why they prefer other facilities, you can see that. Uh, if you go to the next one, Cindy, um, that is the GIS locations for bridges. That map is interactive and you can click on those. Um, right, and that... Um, Go to the next, just keep sliding down. Um, and th this is an interesting slide because we compare this, maybe go back, there you go. We compare um, the census data um, with the, um, we, that's on another slide, but here's our history of the count since 2007. And you can see the trend line. What's interesting is that the later years, that trend line, of course, in 2020 dipped significantly it recovered partially in 2020 and I mean, 2021, it'll be interesting to see what those 22, 2022 numbers look like. I don't think it's going to meet our peak year, which was 2017, but there should be some recovery, I would think. Maybe just slide down a couple more. More locations, visualizing whether the counts are going up and down. This is the historic data, it's kind of raw but um, talks about like South Street Bridge is our most counted, more bikes than any other facility, talking about new infrastructure, a lot of exciting stuff happening. Um, we look at how bike lanes affect behavior, going the wrong way and things like that. Um, this was the Ben Franklin Bridge opening in 2019. Ribbon cutting ceremony where we got the ramp and that significantly increased traffic, even though the pandemic happened, we actually had more bicyclists on the Ben Franklin Bridge. Um, there's our bike share data. We looked to that. Um, I think, yeah, and we just uh, look at the trends for trips. How they gone up from the previous year, Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission has automated counters. We'll look at that. And this is just the, you know, 
in this report, we, we compared trails because there was a huge jump in trails. And here's those cool census maps. Um, it'll probably take a minute to load. But the great thing about this is that it goes to the entire country. You can like go to Boulder, Colorado and compare to what our bicycle mode share is. And um, that's it. So is that the last slide? Yes. Um, so maybe we can get back to the Prezi. So I was wondering if we have any questions. Um, maybe you can put them in the chat or there's few enough of us to where we can um, actually you can just like unmute yourself and ask. What characters being used for scooters? Um, just a tick mark. And the scooter is the thing where the person's holding and it's like the skateboard with the pole. It's any, yeah, it's any electric wheeled vehicle. Like we're not counting people with just like kick scooters or kick skateboards, but if they have an electric skateboard, they have electric scooter. If they are on a mobility device, we count them as e-scooters. Basically any electric personal mobility vehicle gets counted as an e-scooter. Oh, like the wheelchair, like if somebody's going a motorized wheelchair, yeah, you can you can count that too. Okay, but the e-bikes so, are going with the bikes. E-bikes or bicycles, right? Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? Did you email out the forms yet? Uh, I, I couldn't hear that because my volume's very low. Could you just repeat that? I'm sorry. Did you email out the forms yet? Um, so if you, um, you should have, if you go to the sign up sheet, um, we should have emailed you out. If you click on the link in the sign up sheet, it will take you to link to the forms. Um, if you have anybody have any trust, if anybody did not receive the forms and do not know how to get to the forms, um, email Cindy, she'll send you a link. But um, everybody should have gotten a, um, a a kind of an explanation sheet that has all the links to that. But the, the, the other option is you can go through the sign up process again, get to that spreadsheet, and there's a link for the forms. Um, I just posted the link for the, the spreadsheet, which then you can click on the instructions and then that's where the form is. Right, thank you. And um, what we'll do, just because that question was brought up is that maybe we will send everyone that instruction sheet again. Um, and then that way you can kind of review what we were talking about. Just about everything that I talked about is in that um, instruction sheet. All right, is there anything else? Should I be afraid of Broad and Pine? Did I pick the most complicated intersection? Uh, no, that's it's it's a little complicated because Broad is Broad is broad, is a broad street, right? So you'll have a lot of sidewalk riders on Broad, and uh, it's very possible that you'll miss something. Like if you're on the um, west side of Broad, like on the Pierce College side, you might miss people going on the YMCA side. Um, but generally, uh, it's not really that difficult. Um, the, the good thing about the, these intersection counts is that they're all at signalized intersections. Um, and 
the best time to count is when they're stopped at the light and um, you can count a lot of them. Um, yeah, it's, it's not the hardest intersection to count. I think the South Street Bridge is the one where your arm might fall off <laughs> at certain times. All right, I'll, um, I'm gonna try and email everyone before their date, just a link, a reminder and a link for the instructions. Great. All yeah. right. Well, thank you everybody. I'm not gonna take any more of your time. I know people have things to do. And um, if you, like I said, if you just have any questions, um, you know, you can send an email to intern3 at bicyclecoalition.org or john at bicyclecoalition.org and we will, we will set you straight. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I also, um, I'm going to stop recording, but yeah, I recorded.